Hello and welcome to Down the Scope. I'm pretty sure that this snail had a tumour, but it's difficult to be 100% sure because there are no published reports of this type of cancer in a land snail. In this video, we're going to have a look at the snail under the microscope and go through why I'm convinced that this snail had a cancer. A while back, I found a snail with a damaged shell in the garden. So I took it in and kept it to see if the shell would heal. It didn't, eventually progressing to the snail losing a large fragment. The snail didn't seem too perturbed, but I thought it would be kinder to euthanize the animal. Without the fragment of shell, you could see straight through the lung and even see its little snail heart beating away. There was a small area of discoloration in the lung and I thought it might have some kind of pneumonia, so I made a couple of slides to have a look at it. This is a picture of the snail without its shell on, after it had been euthanized, of course. You can see the two eye stalks at the front. And this area here is the mantle, which produces the shell, and the thin tissue behind that is the lung. The coiled organ is mainly hepatopancreas and small intestine. In a view from the front, you can see the kidney just behind the lung. By cutting along the mantle, you can open up the lung and have a little look inside. All of these tiny white dots are a species of mite that live inside the snail's lung. If you pick up a snail or a slug in the garden, you might be able to see them scurrying in and out of the animal's pneumostome, the hole that it breathes through. I think these must have some kind of impact on the snail's health because they're blood feeders. So I was curious to see what kind of damage there might be in the lung. Anyway, I took two sections, one through the lung, kidney, heart complex, and another straight through the body of the snail. Here's the slide of lung, kidney, and heart with a little bit of digestive tract as well. I made a beeline straight for the lung, but it actually looked quite normal for a snail lung. You can see some aggregates of melanocytes, which makes sense because the lung was quite heavily pigmented. Above that, we have some larger blood vessels, which will be carrying the snail's hemolymph for blood around the body. And then some sinuses underneath for hemolymph to flow close to where the air would be and exchange gases with it. But as I scanned down through the lung, eventually I came across something that looked very unusual. This structure full of lots of immature cells. And then in the next section of lung, there are far more of these balls of undifferentiated abnormal cells within the blood vessels and the lung tissue. There were even more of them in the small fragment of digestive tract on the slide. Not within the tract itself, but around it in the connective tissue. In a normal snail, the glands of the hepatopancreas are separated by what I guess is the snail's equivalent of fat tissue. An energy store that surrounds blood vessels. There is the section through the snail's body. You can see the mantle here, the mouth and the radula, and just up here there's the eye with its little pink lens and part of the optic ganglion just underneath it. Here's some of the snail's brain with its characteristically large neurons. And over at one edge there's more of the digestive tract. Once again, around the hepatopancreas, there are huge numbers of these abnormal structures. But what could they be? Could this be some kind of normal anatomy that I'm misinterpreting? Perhaps developing eggs? Normally, the snail's ovotestis are located around the hepatopancreas. This is where the sperm and the egg cells develop. Well, I've never seen developing eggs within a snail, I don't think they would hang out in the same place as they're produced, since they've got a long and specialised reproductive tract to develop within. I've looked at the histology of a couple of hundred snails and never seen anything like this. The presence of the structures in the lung blood vessels really highlights this as some kind of abnormality. I also considered whether this could be some kind of parasite, 
my first thought was Angiostrongylus vasorum, the canine lungworm, but these structures don't look like typical nematode larvae. They're too large and they don't have the right structure, nor do they look like fluke, which I've seen in snails before. I don't think they're related in any way to the lung mites. I'm pretty sure that this snail managed to eat a couple of the lung mites accidentally. We can find a few in its digestive tract. They've got a chitinous exoskeleton, and they're much, much smaller than the odd structures. They don't look like any kind of parasite, adult, or developing that I've seen before. But finally, it began to add up. Poorly differentiated cells forming an almost repeating structure, but with variations in cell size and shape. They have large nuclei with dispersed chromatin and a, a nucleolus. And sometimes you can even find some mitotic figures. I am pretty convinced that this is some kind of tumor. And yes, even invertebrates can get cancers. But if it is a tumor, the next question is, what kind of tumor is this? Bivalve mollusks, uh, like clams, can get tumors of their blood cells, almost like a type of leukemia. To me, this looks very different since it's forming discrete packets of cells and the cells are sticking together rather than remaining individual. In some places, it almost reminds me of the seminomas that you see in dogs, which are derived from the developing sperm cells. This put me in mind of some kind of gonadal neoplasia, a, a cancer derived from the ovo testis. It would certainly be in the right place. As I mentioned before, the ovo testis is normally found in the tissue around the hepatopancreas glands. The fragments in the lung are likely metastases, and that means that this snail would probably have eventually died from this disease. Now, this type of cancer has been described in marine mollusks, but I have not found any similar descriptions in terrestrial snails, so this might even be the first reported case of such a tumour in this group of animals. So that's everything for today. If you want to know more about normal snail anatomy, you can check out my other videos on that. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.